Hello and welcome to our third round with Just Guy Control and Standard. Opponent Mulligan's on the play. I keep, again, the two-lander, but I'm actually happy about this one because the Anticipate basically makes it a three-lander. And it looks like another Black Delirium matchup. Untap land. This is all pretty standard play here. Unfortunately, you know, just looking at my hand, I was just like, oh crap, Liliana, I died of that. But, oh well. That's pretty lucky. Also worth noting, um, some subtle play that I, I forgot to mention is that on turn one, when I drew the island, um, if I didn't draw that, I would have played the port town on turn one. But as is, I then played the Spire Bluff Canal in case I drew, you know, like, Vantage Vantage. I'd be able to get two on tap lands in before playing the port down. Uh, or sorry, if I drew a single Vantage. Double? Let me just walk this through. So yeah, you want to be able to uh, get the port down in tapped and then play these just on tapped if you draw them in order. Um, but because I drew the island, I then want to play this early. So if I draw multiples in a row... I end up in a spot where I don't get stuck with the extra tap land in hand. I can play the port down as a fourth on tap land with the fifth land in my hand. Anyways, here, this is a pretty straightforward take another port town. Just another on tap land. Don't really want fumigate, just want mana given my cards. And now we've established basic control, and we also top deck the best possible card. This card just likes to show up at the right times these games, I think. Just counter the mind rack. I don't have a good answer for it. And I just want to get into my glimmer turn, uh, able to fire it off, and then reestablish control right after. I don't want to have to reestablish control against multiple things or use it. I don't want to get mana tied here, basically. So I keep the on tap land, ship the tap land, draw gear hulk. Whatever. Six land, I'll get there eventually. This turn, I have a few options, and I end up playing uh, Jace on Raveler of Secrets because it sets me up for a potential better mana usage later. Even though Harness Lightning is the best answer to the Flayer, I'd much rather get the Jace onto the battlefield, minus it, and bounce the Flayer, and then potentially next turn have Harness plus Glimmer up or just anything else that's more efficient. And then have a Planeswalker to capitalize on that efficiency with. Jace dies, whatever. Something's going to die to that anyways. Random Grim Flayer resolves. And here, I opt to just make sure that I can actually kill the Flayer as opposed to trying glimmering into an untapped land. I don't want to risk it to get hit. Cascading draw steps, again, just bad times. Also giving my opponent more delirium, bad times. I use the Blessed Alliance because I think it's the worst... Uh, removal spell in this spot, and I want to leave up the Harness Lightning so I can have a clean board if my opponent casts really anything else besides, I mean, even Ishkana at this point, they don't have Delirium. Um, I also, the other important thing is, if I didn't necessarily have the extra energy floating around for my Glimmer, uh, so I wouldn't be able to kill a Mind Rack Demon or whatever, I might have wanted to hold on to the hard removal spell on the, the Blessed Alliance, but because I can scale Lightning up to 5, I'm fine there. No look. We now have basic full control because of Torrential Gear, Hulk flashback stuff. Grapple, whatever, who cares? Big Demon, whatever. You know, this is just full on control mode. I get to hit some cards with Gear Hulk. Um, was one other thing worth noting that I think I've forgotten to mention is, is in these game one scenarios against Delirium, I've definitely been cautious of playing my Gear Hulk into a spot where it could die to Grasp of Darkness. Uh, because Grasp is just so, it's just a straight up blank if you don't play into it. Um, just not getting your Gear Hulk into spots where it's like, oh, I can block with my Gear Hulk. Yeah, you might just like let them use a dead card to trade for a 5-6 that might matter. 
didn't need either of those, have enough removal anyways, draw more lands to do more stuff, doing more things is always great. Gear Hulk attacks in, no viable blocks. Snap counter that. I think it's considerable that I should have countered the Emrakul that my opponent found off it. But I didn't really want to start thinking about what happens if they start harness lightning my creatures or whatever. So I just countered the Traverse. Uh, no attack with the Demon is pretty telling in terms of what's going on. Again, what I just said about Grasp of Darkness. But fortunately, I just get to fire off. Card draw spell. Um... The reason I did this first is because if I hit a counterspell off of this, I wanted to actually just pass with a counterspell up and just be able to counter another Traverse or whatever and not just expose myself to any potential angle of getting Emrakuld or anything like that. Ship those things. Uh, draw the Anticipate anyways. I think I tapped slightly suboptimally here. I think I could have left up Aether Hub on these taps, but it doesn't really matter. My opponent just kind of concedes in the face of all this. Uh, which I guess implies that their hand is... I don't really know. They might have preemptively scooped. If their hand was an untapped land, they could have top-decked Emrakul. So it implies their hand is all like Grasp of Darkness, Grasp of Darkness, and they are dying in two attacks with no real good options. So looking at sideboarding, um, it's basically the same as I sideboard against Sam. I made two slight changes. I got the second negate in there. I cut a spell queller. They're not super high impact, and some of the great spells don't really counter by them, but... They do enough that I want them in my deck. And then the other thing was I sideboarded out the Descend for a Quarantine Field. Um, after playing the game, I don't really care about the blow potential of this. I'm not really exposing a ton of stuff that's going to get, like, Appetite in the Unnaturals or whatever. Um, and it's not really the game the mid-range deck wants to play against the control deck anyways. So this is not going to get blown out. And being able to exile Planeswalkers is super, super important. Um, like, that Obnix Alyssa Liliana situation could have been easily resolved. So that's about it. No other differences. Seems pretty straightforward. Just go threats and counter magic to uh, go over the top of their Emrakul plus discard spell plan. Okay, so going into game two of Green Black versus Just Guy Control. Pretty straightforward keep here. Uh, this is again another one of these. Oh gosh, I hope they don't have Liliana. Opponent's mulliganing, so even better. And they're mulliganing again. Very lucky for me. This is an example of get your tap land out of the way if possible, then untap land. And finding a forest, there's some implications of that, but I'm not going to read too much into it. They may just want to actually cast spells. I think this turn I make a mistake by leaving up Anticipate. I think I was actually supposed to just play the Fumarole and guarantee myself a uh, counterspell into Gideon. So this Liliana resolves. Fortunately, we have Dismissal for a potential ultimate in a few turns. I fire my Anticipate once it's locked in. And then from here, I take the Spire Bluff Canal to the untapped land. Pretty straightforward. Which, I guess, that was a pretty bad Anticipate, so I got paid off for my decision to uh, play the untapped land. Just get it out of the way. But being forced to a spot where I take an untapped land over something relevant is kind of awkward later. So I have multiple types of counter spells, all sorts of fun stuff going on. I want to counter. I want my Gideon to resolve uh, unopposed because it can then clock down Liliana. Also, exiling the Grim Flayer makes the Liliana pretty bad because it has nothing to get back. This is a pretty clear turn of just cast Gideon and start beating down on the Liliana. Uh... The only thing this hand's missing is an answer for a creature that my opponent plays to try and block, but uh, they just had a grapple, and that's it. And it got back a land. And so from here, I just played a wipe out the Liliana. And the attack with Bolt is in case... If my opponent has a Grasp of Darkness, I don't want the Liliana surviving another turn, so I just shove both there. I'm okay with the Gideon getting attacked by the Hissing Quagmire. Just, like, super, super okay on every single level here. Uh, 
Gideon dying is fine because I have the replacement. You know, the, the you know, first one dying doesn't matter if I just get to cast another one with a uh, rebuff up because all the things my opponent can cast on that follow up turn that I can rebuff seem, or that I want to counter like Ishkanar or whatever seem rebuffable. I'm fine in advancing here. I think I can fight off basically anything. It's worth noting that those whole rebuff lines I was talking about implied another land, but my opponent just has a uh, just a pick the brain, look at my hand, realize it's full of too much action for them, and they apparently just don't have a Gideon solution, so they concede down to one card. Uh, I think the Mulligans hit the green black deck pretty hard. I guess they hit both decks pretty hard in this matchup. Um, but the green-black deck definitely has to hit more land drops than the uh, Jeskai deck, I think, post-board, which is uh, a compounding factor of the mulligans. The Jeskai deck can kind of bail itself out with the Gideon, even if it's short on one-for-one -one answers, as the green-black deck just doesn't have the same flexibility there. Um, I was actually kind of impressed with the positioning in this matchup. Even though the green-black deck has a lot of problematic permanence, um, the Jeskai deck just feels like it has the right answers and the right clock. You do have to be a little aggressive to prevent yourself from getting Emrakuld, but there's a lot of things you can do to mitigate that. Um, I think I ended up on the lucky side of this matchup, but it didn't feel horrific, and the fact that you can even get lucky in some of these ways with a control deck is really nice.